Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can paint the Necron Cryptek found in Forgebane in the colours of the Sortek Dynasty. And as always, I'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. Before we can begin painting our miniature, we first of all need to assemble and prime it. I've only partly assembled the miniature to make painting those hard to reach areas much easier. I've also primed this miniature using a black primer as there are quite a lot of dark colours on this miniature that the black base coat will assist in painting. The first area of our Cryptek to paint is its silver body and for this we will be using Lead Belcher. However, before we start to paint we want to mix in a little water with our paint and to do this take a brush load of Lead Belcher and mix it with roughly equal quantity of water. The reason we do this to our base coat is to thin down the paint. This means that when we apply it to our miniature we don't accidentally apply it too thickly and obscure some of the details. Using our thin down mixture of lead belcher, we now want to paint over all of the silver metallic areas of our Cryptek, which for the most part includes the torso, arms, legs, as well as part of the Canoptek cloak as well. If after applying your first layer the paint hasn't covered perfectly, then don't worry. Simply allow the paint to dry and then apply a second layer over the top. This will result in a much smoother finish than if you had painted on a single layer of a non watered down paint. Much like our base coats, when we come to apply washes, we also want to water them down a little and the null oil that I'll be using in this step is no exception. Again, I find that mixing in roughly equal parts water to the wash results in a mixture which will provide a much more subtle looking shading than if you had applied it straight from the pot. With the wash watered down, we can now start applying this over the silver metallic areas. This wash will have two effects. Firstly, it will darken down the silver areas a little, which will help to contrast when we paint on the highlight later. Secondly, the wash will flow into the recesses, creating the effect of shading. This shading will give the details a much more definition, making them stand out more, therefore improving the miniature's overall level of detail. The next step in painting your Cryptek is to apply a layer of Ironbreaker, which is a slightly brighter silver, over the areas we painted in the previous step. Like before, I have watered down my paint slightly and will be focusing my application to the top sections of the model. If you are having trouble visualizing which areas to paint, the easiest way to work them out is to shine a bright light from directly above the model whilst in a dark room. The areas that are illuminated by the light should be painted with the Ironbreaker. Now this may result in some areas only being half painted with the iron breaker, but this is intentional. By having two shades of metal we will create a much more realistic looking miniature. When we come to apply our highlights, watering down our paint will really help in improving the flow of the paint off the brush. This will make getting those thin lines much easier. However, unlike previous mixes, we don't want to mix in quite as much water. I find that a mixture of two parts paint, in this case Stormhose Silver, to only one part water is a preferable mixture for your highlights. We now want to lightly drag the tip of a thin brush dipped in our Stormhose Silver mixture along the raised edges of our silver metallic areas. This will create a small line of bright silver along the outside of the panels which will create the appearance of light reflecting off of these hard edges. The next areas to paint are the various bronze areas of the miniature. These include the segmented cloak, areas of the staff, and also some of the details on the face and torso. We want to begin painting these areas with a dark color first of all, and for this I'll be using Warplock Bronze. Apply this paint as we did with our Ironbreaker base coat previously. The next step in tackling our bronze areas is to lighten them up a little, and for this we will be using Brass Scorpion. Apply this paint over all the bronze areas, but leave the darker Warplock bronze visible in the recesses. This contrast between the lighter colour on the surfaces and the dark colour in the recesses will really help the details to stand out. After our layer of Brass Scorpion has dried, we now can apply a wash of Agrax Earthshade over the whole area. This will serve to both further enhance the previous contrast we achieved between the darker and lighter colours, whilst also slightly dulling down the bronze colouring as well. To finish off painting the bronze areas, we now want to paint on an edge highlight and this time we'll be using Fulgurite Copper. You should find that our dulling down of the surface with our wash in the last step will help this highlight to stand out much more prominently than if we hadn't applied the Agrax Earthshade. So to apply the highlight, simply follow the same steps as with our previous highlight to pick out those hard edges. At this stage we have finished painting all of our metallic areas which means we can start painting the greens on this miniature. The first step in doing so is to start off painting all of the armor panels and blades of the staff using a base coat of Caliban Green. The next paint we will be using is Warpstone Glow and we will be applying this in three distinct ways. 
The first switch is an edge highlight of all the areas that we painted using Caliban Green. The second way that we'll be using Warp Zone Glow is as a base coat for the various glowing green areas. These include the orbs on the staff, counter-tech cloak, and also the belt. As Warp Zone Glow is not a base paint, you may find that you need to apply a couple of extra layers in order to get a smooth and even base coat. So make sure you thin down your paint. Finally, we'll be using Warp Zone Glow as a glaze. However, before we do this, we want to reduce the strength of the pigmentation in the paint, and for this, I'll be mixing in some Lamia Medium. Much like the base coat, we want to use a ratio of roughly one part paint to one part medium. Using our Warp Zone Glow mixture, we now want to steadily build up a gradient on the blades of the staff. We will treat each segment as its own gradient, building up a smooth transition between the dark Caliban Green and the lighter Warp Stone Glow. To do this, paint only the bottom two thirds of each individual panel on the blade, keeping the direction of the gradient consistent across the panels. After applying the first layer, allow it to dry and then apply a second layer over the top, but reduce the area that you're covering slightly so that you focus more on the lighter side of the gradient. Repeat this process again and you should be left with a smooth gradient which will make the blades appear to be sheathed in energy. Much like the last step, we'll be using our next paint, Moot Green, in a few different ways. First of all, we'll be using it to achieve an extreme highlight of the areas we highlighted with Warpstone Glow in the previous step. Now extreme highlights follow the same principles as regular highlighting, but instead of painting the whole edge, we instead only apply a small dot of paint on the corners where edges converge. By picking out these points with a light paint, we give them a much sharper appearance, which can help to make the panels look more defined than they actually are. In addition to the highlights, we now want to continue working on the gradients on our staff. Again, mix in some Lamium Medium with your Moot Green, much like we did for the Warpstone Glow. However, this time we only want to focus our Warp Zone Glow on the bottom third of the panels. Once the blades are complete, you can now apply your Moot Green Glaze to the various green orbs dotted across the miniature. When painting these areas, focus on the center two thirds of the orb, leaving the darker Warp Zone Glow visible along the edges. Before we move on to our highlight, we first of all want to apply a layer of Waywatcher Green Glaze over the blades and the orbs. This glaze will serve to unify the previous layers, helping to smooth out the transition. The final paint to use on our green areas is Gorse Blaster Green, and we want to start off by highlighting the edges of our crystal and also the blades. Remember to mix in a small amount of water to improve the flow of your paint. The final step in painting our green areas is to create a Gorse Blaster Green and Lamian Medium mixture and paint the green orbs. This time we only want to focus on the center of the orb, once completed, we should be left with a glowing effect. In this next step, we now want to highlight the edges of the black areas, such as the staff handle and the symbol on the chest. These areas should already be black from our primer, but you may need to touch up these areas a little with a bad and black. Once you've done this, you can then go ahead and highlight the edges of these black areas using Dawnstone. The final step in painting our Cryptek is to tackle his white head. And for this, we want to start off with a base coat of Celestra Grey. You will find the application of two thin layers particularly effective in ensuring good coverage over the black base coat. To finish off the head, we now want to apply a thin edge highlight of white scar along the edges. You can also use this paint to apply a small dot of white to the center of the green orbs to help enhance their glowing effect. And here we have the completed Cryptek that has been fully assembled and based in an appropriate Necron theme. You can find a full list of all the paints that I've used in the tutorial in the description below. And so that concludes this video on painting the Necron Cryptek. Now, whilst I've focused on a Cryptek in this tutorial, you could apply the exact same colors and techniques featured in this video to any of the Necron miniatures that you want to paint up in the colors of the Sortek dynasty. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below, along with your suggestions for future tutorials you would like to see me tackle in the future. Make sure to give this video a like and also hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up to date with all of my latest content. And if you're interested in supporting me and this channel and uh, in making future videos, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page, which you can find a link to in the description below. So the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.